Uh, Wall Street and other global banks stepping up hiring, stepping up and building out their footprints here in China. What is behind the demand, Jonas? Well, I mean, there, there's obviously a long-term play and there's the short-term play. China's economy has proved very resilient this year. So even in a, you know, a, a very tough year, um, this has proceeded apace. But, but I mean, simply put, uh, they're chasing profits. China is, you know, the golden chalice for investment banks, money, money managers and brokers right now. It's a vast untapped market. They were last year allowed to take full control of ventures in the country and are all rushing in. You know, we've seen J.P. Morgan lose hiring as well as Japan, Japan's Nomura and Credit Suisse. Goldman Sachs has a plan to double its workforce over the next few years. And on the brokerage side alone, by one estimate, there's some $100 billion in profits to chase down the line. Um, so obviously all the banks want to grab a big share of that. Yeah, in fact, Jonas, we just broke some news, right? Uh, earlier, the J.P. Morgan and China Merchants Bank in talks to your point on a wealth venture. Now, obviously, all of this comes at a time, very tense political situation here. What are the risks involved, do you think, uh, and how do you think these banks are calculating those risks and obviously the expansion plans that they also have? I mean, I think so far so good. I would say um, there's obviously a lot of political mm. tension, but at least on the surface, uh, the financial opening has proceeded as planned. Um, last year, we saw approvals for Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, and, and, a, and a slew of other companies to move big into China. But obviously, the murky situation of which the abrupt change in regulations that derailed Ant Group's IPO is a prime. But China has ever its own reasons to plow ahead with the opening, and officials have given no outward signs that will go back on their commitments.